Alrighty, hey, thanks everyone for tuning in. I am super excited to be hanging out with a great friend who is doing some incredible work these days. Mike, Mike Hag, um, f forgive me, Is that, am I getting your name right, dude? I feel like it's been too long. That's <laughs> Hag, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Well, hey, I know you're doing some incredible stuff with a whole lot of uh, projects that are just available to the whole industry, to the whole community. I know you've been cooking up with Atomic Red Team. I know you've been doing some phenomenal stuff with Lull Drivers. Could you just kind of help, I don't know, fill in in case folks aren't too familiar with who you are and what you're up to and all those awesome initiatives? I'd love for you to, I don't know, take the take the floor, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Michael Haig and i um, been working in the industry, I think, 12 years or something. It's It's been a little while now. Um, most recently, you know, I've been working at Splunk for about two and a half years on the threat research team. Uh, before that, I was at Red Canary for four years, which was about the time we introduced the Atomic Red Team tool set. Um, and obviously most recently was the Low Drivers project. Uh, we started tackling bootloaders and we also released a free like open source version of uh, a Sigma rule converter as well. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, my day-to-day -day job is developing security content related to threats. So we just research the threats, develop the content, we ship it out to Splunk customers and people consume. Super cool. Well, hey, I don't know if you have any tricks up your sleeve or anything cool that we, I don't know, could pull out of the hat, but some show and tell, some demo would be awesome. I know, hey, just two talking heads can be a little bit bore, boring, dull and dry, uh, but if you've got any magic tricks or some upcoming stuff you're excited to showcase, hey, I'm all ears, my friend. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's dive in. I, yeah. So kind of the start, right? Um, been maintaining Atomic Red Team for, uh, it says five years on here. I think it's... Wow. Yeah, it's going on probably five, six years. It's been around. Um, you know, this project is great for those who want to, you know, test or simulate attacker, you know, tradecraft uh, in a very kind of like benign way, uh, meant to just send things downrange, get those traces in your logs, and then go back and like determine, you know, what we saw and what we didn't see. And so the project's been awesome. Um, you know, we're at over 8,100 stars, which is so mind blowing. Um, it's integrated with many, many different tools out there, enterprise tools, all that kind of stuff. So it's a very popular project. Um, and I've been lately, you've probably seen it on Twitter. Um, I uh, linked into, I've been trying to share, uh, kind of like free atomics. And so if you grab one of these free atomics, you can submit it, uh, as a PR here to the project, you get a t-shirt, you get a sticker. Um, so you can, you know be also a contributor to Atomic Red Team. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Well, hey, I, I got to say, I'd love to sing the praises here. I think Atomic Red Team has become like such an integral part of a whole lot of folks testing just for, I don't know, making sure like, look, are we validating uh, what could occur in our environment? Do we have the detection engineering in place? So very, very slick. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's extremely powerful. And I mean, it started out I mean, I think we talked about it a little bit uh, in prior blogs about where Atomic came from, but it, just, it was meant to just help during, when I was at Red Canary, these what we called initial presentation calls uh, with like a prospect. And we would, the customer or prospect would say, oh, I'm just going to run a bunch of malware and see what you guys catch. <laughs> and it was like, well, that's not, it's not how it goes in the real world, <laughs> you know? And so... I started to like slowly compile, you know, the original Atomic, um, the way the project had looked. And so, and it was back then, it was just copy paste, markdown. Hmm. Yeah, if you actually Google it, it comes up. So here's the original project for fun. Um, yeah, it's called Bookish Happiness. It was one of those uh, GitHub <laughs> auto-generated names. And you could just go in here and say, I want to live off the land today and copy paste. Fire it up. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So yeah, history. That's very, very cool to see some of the behind the scenes origin story. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I, I have a video, at least just a small one, I think, that at least kind of gets a chance to play with Atomic Red Team. But it's a super simple, super easy, like, invoke all yeah. and then just see what blows up. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that, I think, is a, the allure is just how easy it is to get it going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I mean, we've broken into um, Cloud Atomics. We have, there's, yeah, AWS, 
Azure, we have some Google stuff. Um, yeah, I think there's some 365, obviously Mac and Linux and Windows. Maybe some container stuff in here now. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, but let me see. Yeah, looks like someone's been contributing. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, constantly things are coming in. Lots of lots of folks out there have, you know, big environments that they're testing themselves. Their red team is testing and they kindly share that back, which is great because it helps the whole community as a whole. The beauty is, uh, in case folks weren't familiar, all these T numbers, dot, whatever, these are all mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So like you at least have the same vernacular and terminology and lingo to talk about all this stuff. Uh, and that, I don't know, I think, it, again, is a godsend. I, I, I'm going to stop fanboying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have a matrix around here. I'm failing to find it on the fly here, but uh, there is a MITRE matrix. Oh, yeah, maybe this is it. Nope, that's not it. Um, yeah, the matrix is around, but yep, there's all that in the project. Um, you can click through, you know, based on Mac, Windows, or Linux. I think probably the cloud. I don't know if the cloud ones are in there, but cool. I feel like it's right here. Indexes. Yeah, you got the full layers and everything. Sweet. Well, hey, that's a fun teaser, but I think uh, is is more of your time now split to this whole new venture for Lowell drivers, or I don't know what can you help me? Uh, I don't know fill things in for folks. What the heck is Lowell drivers, or how do you explain it to some hey random fellow at the bar? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the hardest like elevator pitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's this new project that uses drivers. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah. What's a driver? Um, yeah, so. A couple years ago, when I was working at Red Canary, um, we had an we had an incident go down, and a we had alerted on it and shipped the content to the customer, letting them know bad things happened. Um, but there was something still on the endpoint <clears throat> that intrigued me, and so it ended up being a driver, and they had installed the driver on the box. Uh, it would it looked completely benign. It matched like a Microsoft kind of driver name. It was just kind of like, oh, that's odd. And um, and so we started digging into it and turned out to be part of this campaign. The name of it's really funny. It's called Nugget Phantom. Hmm. And so Nugget Phantom, like, used the old school stuff. They wouldn't, you know, get on the box, install their driver, do a bunch of things, which led to a coin miner. And that's cool. Um, but it really interested me. I was like, what are these drivers things? And at the time, Casey Smith and I, we really started digging into them and just kind of geeking out. And, and it was, it's just one of these topics that's so hard to like show or explain to defenders, um, in an easy way to kind of consume. And it, it's so complex too. just like, oh, it's between hardware and software. Like, what does a driver do? How does it begin? And oh, wait, there's vulnerable drivers? Like what makes a driver vulnerable? Um, and so kind of from there, two, three years ago, I just kind of tracked this. And last year I did a talk at the Sands Deeper Summit related to drivers. And when I finished, I, I just was like, that's cool. And I even had a slide that was like, if you want to find vulnerable drivers, go here or there or there. And maybe you'll find some over there, like these corners of the internet. Right. And I was just like, that doesn't seem right. And so I think it was like January or so. I just was like, you know what? I want to build a website. I want to put a site together that brings these things together. All these like corners of the internet and, you know, hack forums and game forums. Like, let's just put all these drivers in one place. <laughs> and and so the name Living Off the Land or Lowell Drivers comes from a uh, conversation with Matt Graber and I am about drivers as well. Um, he We would just call them low drivers and we had like a spreadsheet and we were just kind of like tracking and stuff. And it just kind of stuck with me. Um, obviously the more known one is BYOBD, bring your own vulnerable driver. Uh, and so if you search Twitter, you probably won't find low drivers. You'll definitely find BYOBD. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the, the idea here is let's find as many as possible and share it in one place where defenders, red teamers, researchers can go and find these things and make it easy to consume as far as like being able to gather it uh, or have detections for it. So we've published, there's like a generic kind of easy API where you can grab 
everything on the site in a CSV or a JSON. If you want some kind of like can detection stuff, we have Sigma rules um, that cover the different pieces of content and the categories. There is a, uh, if you drill into one of them, so like this one in particular, um, this was a driver used in a campaign contributed by a good friend. Um, you can download it. So if you wanted to like play with it, you could download it. You could run the simple service create here. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, we have like the Yara built in here. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but we have Yara. <laughs> uh, we got the Sigma rules and you got a Sysmon config uh, for alerting and blocking, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and then if you wanted to pivot on just kind of like digging into it, we do extract tons of metadata. Um, this is probably one of the, the more rich pieces to the project is yeah. all this metadata. And one, when we first added this one, the rich PE header hash, I was like, I don't even know what this is. Like someone asked for it. I think I was like, I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of it. And I mean, always be learning, right? Like right. I was like, I don't, I have no idea what this is, but sure, we'll add it. And then when we added it and I clicked on one of them and it took me to virus total, it, all of these linked to VT. And I was like, whoa, like you could find even more evil this way. <laughs> like this is crazy. <laughs> and so it goes right back into the platform. Uh, and then, yeah, here's all the, all the certificate stuff. Um, we've had requests to add all the TBS stuff, the to be signed hashes. Um, yeah, lots of great, you know, not customer feedback, but community feedback uh, coming into the project and being able to add all this so that, you know, anybody who's curious or wants to know, you can like dig through and, and find everything you need to find on the driver. You know, a lot of it's happening to where you as the defender or the researcher, you almost don't even have to like go and rip it apart. For the most part, everything's here, you're ready to go. Um, obviously, if you were trying to play with it from like a the exploit side or you want to use it in a way like you'd have to take it to the next level so just to add a little bit more color i think because in case folks don't have the immediate association for like the word driver uh hey that mm -hmm. means like you're hooking into and playing with the stuff that runs on the kernel or at that kernel level for your computer so if it's vulnerable, if it's got some whatever weird misconfigurations or other oddities, then hey, maybe you could do some shady, nefarious stuff, hook into it to make it uh, kill different processes or control different files or pieces and aspects of the uh, file system that you wouldn't otherwise, because look, you've just got that super duper low level core driver again, interacting with the with the kernel. Uh, so I think it's incredible that like now there's this one stop shop to be able to I don't know, at least get a lay of the land as to where what all is out there uh, and how those can be abused and which of them even are ab abusable. <laughs> Again, both for offense and defense, as you mentioned. But is yeah. the download button new? Maybe I'm naive. I feel like I completely missed it some time ago. I didn't know you had oh. a little catalog and archived. Yeah, yeah, they're all there. Um, awesome. Yeah, we try to, anytime, <laughs> I think if you, <laughs> anytime you see the verified uh, arrow here, check, um, it means that we, you know, have the driver, we verify that it's like, you know, cross reference with like another resource. So mm -hmm. like, you know, Mandy and blog in this case, or, uh, Microsoft driver block list, things like that. That's kind of how we verify it. Uh, it's been seen. And then we obviously try to download it and get the driver so that if you want to consume it, you can, um, there are some in here, like the ever popular proc. Prop Explorer, oh, no, that, maybe that was it, actually. I know Gmer is always uh, a hot topic, right? I think I saw Echo oh, yeah. a lot of folks chatting about these days. Yep, <laughs> yeah. So here's uh, the Proc Explorer. Um, Nas had gone through and dumped a ton of time into finding, like, almost every one that's out there. So you can notice the scroll bar just kind of goes on. Um, but yeah, you can download each one of these individually. So if you were looking for like a particular hash that you saw or whatnot, yep. Now, can I ask, how can folks use this as a springboard? Because look, we've got the download functionality. How do they like play with it? Or I don't know, is there a way to just speed run getting it set up and actually uh, tinkering with some of those commands or those things that you've already noted in there? Oh, so as far as like kicking, like get it running on your box yeah. and hope. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to so, give you a cool, cool segue yeah, to see some of the other I know, work you're that up was to. great. <laughs> okay. So, um, so there's obviously a few things with Windows in general. Like uh, most of these will be blocked. Uh, I think 
Um, there was some research that came out. I think it's like 60, 70% of everything we have in here will be blocked by, by Windows, uh, either Defender, Secure Boot. Um, yeah, all the different pieces that Microsoft has done lately <laughs> will right. prevent 60, 70%, which is awesome. Um, but there are times where maybe you want to install it. Either you downgraded your system and you're, you just want to play. Uh, and so one thing I want to share uh, is at Texas Cyber Summit uh, coming up at the end of the month, uh, we're going to be doing a workshop for Lowell drivers. And um, we created a cool page here to help uh, defenders in the workshop learn a little bit more. Um, the site allows us to kind of like show the initial access to kind of like when the service gets created. And so on the back end of this little app that you see here, it will create an HTA file uh, that embeds the driver. Either you upload one or you click one here. Um, it'll embed it into the HTA and just download it. Uh, and then you just obviously double click your HTA. Um, it will drop the driver to disk. It will randomly generate the name, put it in like a random location. Uh, and then, um, you know, work to start it for you um, and basically just get it rolling for you kind of all in one make it easy for folks to test and see what this looks like uh, and so I mean the, the giveaways right we want folks to be able to play with a couple of different things like HTAs a driver being written to disk random name different location non-standard path things like that uh, and then obviously being created and there's there's multiple points of you know, detection opportunities here. And that's that's the idea of this. And so we'll we'll definitely officially release this at uh Texas Cyber Summit, but there's your there's your sneak peek. Nice. Can I ask a horrible question? And I don't know if I'm gonna be putting you on the spot. Um <laughs> but could we are you comfortable? Oh, is there a peek at the source code as to how y'all cook this together? Or is there maybe a demo? And again, I don't know if you have something at the ready. And if not, that's totally okay. This is still just an awesome idea. And I'm excited to see it come to life. But yeah. thought I'd ask in case there are any other fireworks we can set off. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, dive in. Let me <laughs> remember my password on the fly. <laughs> ah. No, yeah, this is the whole point. We, you know, if you, if you listen to Atomics on a Friday, it's do a demo or or don't right <laughs> yeah and what is atomics on a friday in case there are some folks that uh i don't mean to have you keep rambling while you're trying to type here but no you're good uh yeah atomics on a friday uh paul Mashad and i we get together and we we geek out we showcase atomic tests talk about detection opportunities and mitigations uh for all of it it's it's really fun it's random and it's been a it's been a really good time <laughs> Sweet. Hopefully I can get some folks, hey, come to hang out and tune into to that show. I know you guys have a lot of fun with it and there's great value there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so here is the the, the base HTA file. Um, it does all kind of the standard stuff you would see kind of in like a air quote malicious one, um, mostly focused on, you know, the base 64 piece up at the top here. It will write a log file to disk um, which is kind of cool. I think that's what was showing right here, actually. Uh, just kind of gives you high level, like, hey, it was written, basic stuff, um, letting you know it worked. And so it does the logging. Um, here's your base64 helper, decode function, and then down here. Uh, this is actually the second one that I created. So there's the standard base64, and then I also created another HTA, uh, which will embed the driver in base64 reversed. Um, and so this is the reverse one. You can kind of see based on that. And if I wasn't, uh, or if I do a word wrap, it will obviously blow up our window here. Right. So, but yeah, let's go ahead and remove that for the moment. <laughs> um, so it writes it to disk. Uh, it does a random service name dot sys to the C Windows task directory. So there's like, you know, one of our detection opportunities here. Uh, and then it'll go through and run service create uh, to start that driver for us. And so, uh, as I mentioned, you could just double tap it. Where is it at? This one. And it'll go and kick that off. And I just have the task directory open over here. And today's the 15th. Yep. And so there's that one. And I'm just double checking. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is the, <laughs> the correct one. Um, 
yeah, the <laughs> if you noticed on the uh, on back on the Streamlit site, there is a version where you can do a uh, you can do like a oh gosh, a you can resign it, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you can resign it um, just for fun, and you know just to be able to do it a different way. But yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> Is Aurora, I see it, and I'm just laughing down at the bottom right, just it's firing going off, crazy. going crazy. It, are there any yeah. of those that come from, hey, spinning up the driver, or is it just other random shenanigans on your device? <laughs> I It's it's everything else All happening in the background. Yeah. It's like, yeah. If I, like, click something, it freaks out. Like, here's the bobs. There it goes, you know. <laughs> anyway, I, know, I stare at it sometimes. So cool. <laughs> So, hey, next, just for a lot of folks that do want to get a chance to play with it, like, look, you can pry open that .sys file, like, explore the driver itself in Ida, Ghidra, whatever. And then I th I'm pretty sure, hey, if you're just sending some of the, the device I.O. control codes, see where in the path of its logic you can make it do some oddball interesting stuff um, and potentially just, I don't know, tell it to manipulate uh, things on the device and uh, in case any of the hacker red team folks want to play but still, hey, knowing what happens there so the blue team defender folks can track that and monitor it. So cool. And look, I, I think it spread like wildfire. I feel like I've seen Twitter or X, right, a little bit go crazy over that BYOVD, bring your own vulnerable driver, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I I will say that at least the last six months, it's amped up, right, as far as like it being reported in big reports. Um researchers digging into them you know, we've seen multiple tools get dropped that are using drivers now yeah it's definitely gaining a lot of steam and visibility which is awesome well sweet man hey thank you so much for a little bit of the crash course uh it's awesome and i again want to help i don't know spread the uh, the knowledge and get that info out to as many folks as we can because it's an incredible thing here but Thank anything you. else to showcase anything else i don't know you want to uh i don't know mention between <laughs> any other atomics on a friday efforts or sweet stuff that you're up to how can folks track you down at texas summer cyber cyber summit <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so texas cyber summit we're there on the friday which i think is like the 28th or 29th i can't remember um we'll be there doing the two-hour workshop uh you can find me on twitter x under m underscore haggis linkedin Kind of all those standard spots Social and locations. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> cool. Or uh, YouTube at Atomics on a Friday. Nice. Nice. Is that, That's a live <laughs> show? Is it always on YouTube or is there more on other platforms? Yeah, it's live. Um, we ship it out to Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Sweet. So it's the same name across the board. Cool. I know there will be a ton of folks, hey, interested in all that you guys are cooking up, so. <laughs> thank you so much man seriously this was very very cool thank you, John. and uh thank been you. really cool to hang out um i'd love to get my hands on it and i'm excited to see that hta generator uh hit the public that'll help really streamline a lot of folks that just probably a little bit too scared and squeamish to like what do i do with this driver thing <laughs> yes that'll be good that'll be fun <laughs> thanks again my friend appreciate everyone tuning in but i'll leave you, you to it